Welcome to WX TV, your online source for weatherization training. In today's episode, we'll be looking at weatherization in a hot and arid climate. We went on the road to Phoenix, Arizona to see how the different architecture of their building stock poses challenges to the cooling of their homes. We'll be diving into some building science, plenty of duct sealing, as well as taking a look at some simple measures that they implement to try to beat the heat in the Southwest. Hi, my name's Chris Baker. I'm with the Southwest Building Science Training Center, and we're auditing a home right now that was built in about 1970. And the reason we're showing you the audit process for this house is we have a very unique housing stock down here in Phoenix. You'll notice on some of the other shots I took, most of our houses have stucco walls, so our walls are very tight. Where we start running into problems in this climate zone is up in the attics. We have always have these types of drop soffits, archways. This is pretty common for the architecture here. And we always have big connections into our attic. And then you'll also notice as we walk around this house, that our ducts are always up in the attic and our attic temperatures are very hot all year round. So duct sealing is a big priority for us as well as an R30 insulation, which is usually misaligned because bats are also a common use around here. As you can see here, we usually have centralized return systems in our housing stock. And this return has already been previously sealed up. It looks like this house was weatherized already once before. And as you can see, they get up in there with the mastic and they seal everything they can. With the hot attic temperatures, and centralized return system, as you can imagine, having our ducts in the attic can be a big issue for this climate. Number one on our priority list here in Phoenix in the Southwest with a hot arid climate is sealing up these supply return, supplies and returns whenever we can. Another issue we always have with our centralized return systems here in Phoenix is that we get incredible room pressures. And so in order to get that room pressure air back from the supplies back to the return, we often have to add in passive return into all the doors. This is not a common practice for it to do it this way. But as you can see, the homeowner here figured out the problem and added their own. This one's not real bad, but watch what happens when we take the tape off of that return. and that goes down to a little more reasonable number. Another thing that's pretty un unique to this part of the country for our housing stock is you'll notice that there's a lot of ceiling height changes. Our housing stock is just riddled with drop soffits all over the place. And these allow us to get some room down for our supply returns, supplies and returns for our duct system. But because these things are all over and they're never capped up in the attic, we get plenty of misalignments on our insulation. The pressure boundaries are usually all messed up. And this allows all of these drop soffits in most of our housing stock to become large radiant heaters. And as you can see in our housing stock, we have all kinds of connections to the attic, especially wherever there's a drop soffit. And here we have a drop soffit to an interior wall and we just got the pressure pan over top of a light switch. And as you can see, we always have connections on our interior walls where that hot attic air comes down into the walls and makes it a radiant heater. And here's how the knee walls, I mean, sorry, the drop soffits look from up high, from up in the attic. You can see we have exposed sheetrock that's part of that drop soffit down in the kitchen. If we look further back, you can see these things are never quite treated right up here. These soffits are never capped, and so those knee walls become exposed in that whole drop area becomes one big radiant heater as well as warming up all the ductwork inside. This is all exposed sheetrock up here because of these drop soffits. And this is one of the biggest problems we have in our housing stock is these drop soffits are never capped off so the pressure boundary gets confused and all that air is allowed to communicate right down all the interior walls. Here in Phoenix, most of our ductwork is always in the attic. It's usually flex duct and it's insulated. Until about six months ago, the code was R4 for our duct insulation. It just recently jumped to R8, even though our attic insulation requirements are R30. So as you can imagine, trying to pump 78 degree cooled down air through these hot attics under insulated ducts can be quite a nightmare. 
Another measure that works out really well for us here in Arizona is sunscreens. As you can see, they look like your average screen, but they cut down the solar gain by about 80%. Here it is from the outside, and then I'll go inside and film it while it's being put back onto the window, and you can see the reduction in light that comes into the room. So as you can see here, we're getting plenty of light into this room here, which means we're getting plenty of solar gain. Now DJ is going to put the sunscreen back on so you can see the reduction in light that comes into this room. We just put them on with turn buttons and they just snap right on. And as you can see, it reduces the light considerably. We still get plenty of natural light, but 80% of it is cut down that cuts down our solar gain, especially when you consider our houses are usually slab on grade. We have huge thermal mass on our floors that just collect all that solar heat and let it back out all night long. Another item that's common to the housing stock here is single paned aluminum frame windows. This becomes a big issue in Phoenix because we get plenty of solar gain around here. And of course, these window frames being made of aluminum just allow the heat to zip right on through. It was pretty typical for, for us to have our AC units up on the roof. And you can see in this house here, although it's not all that large in square footage and we only have 1700 CFM of shell leakage, that AC just wasn't cutting it quite for this family. So as we go along this wall, you'll see we also have three window AC units built in through the walls to help make up some extra cooling capacity. And as you can imagine, at 10 cents a kilowatt hour, we spend quite a lot of money cooling our housing stock here in Phoenix. This is a mobile home typical. Uh, duct in a mobile home floor system. Yeah, when we seal these up, we make sure we cap off the end about a, maybe a, a six inches in or so. And in the ceiling, we have a EVAP cooler, which the gentleman is keeping, so we're going to leave those vents. We're going to put a new register on there that you can actually open and close. This one is sealed. You can't, uh, it's too tight to open and close. And it's getting a new condenser, a new line set, a new coil to match the condensing unit for a 13 sear. For instance, itself's in good shape. There's more ducts. It's been sealed. It's a new coil. Be welding that up shortly and then sealing up the holes. Evap cooler vent, more ductwork. And here's the other end of the run. Sealed up very nicely. Make sure all that AC is coming into the house and not underneath the mobile home. All right, here we are in Phoenix. Uh, I've got a new install with some new ductwork running up in the attic. There's a new system. Say hi, guys. You guys are on camera. Hope you're not. Hey, good morning. <laughs> doing some, uh, some weatherization here. Nice wrap on the ductwork. So we're using R8 Flex on the, everything we do here. And I am going to go up in the attic, uh, see if I can find some installation problems. All right, here we are in the attic. Yeehaw. It's probably about 110 in here right now. Actually, it's not bad today. It's a mild day in Phoenix, only about 80 degrees. There's a can we're doing, we're running some flex off of that. Got mastic all on the inside collars, and then once they attach the flex, we'll be masking and sealing that also. So we put the, the black um, tube on, and then we add the hard cast tape to make sure it's uh, it's sealed. Then we add the, the nylon strap to make sure it never comes off. Then we'll hard, and then we'll use the uh, duct sealer to uh, make a cast of everything. That way we know that uh, this, this thing will be up there for 20 years and not leak air. Looks like we got some, some decent insulation. We'll probably be uh, upgrading a little bit to R30 here. So we mask off everything. In case there's any spillage. Let me get out of the attic. we go up on the roof. Look at the new unit. New AC install. There's the old cooler drop, sealed up. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. 
It was great to see weatherization in a hot climate where cooling is the primary expense nine or more months out of the year. And with all their ductwork running through the attic, duct sealing becomes crucial, as well as stopping the communication between those drop soffits and the hot attic space. Very different from what we see up north where the crews are struggling to keep that heat in. Hey, if you want to showcase your weatherization crews in some different part of the country, check out the link at the bottom of our page. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.